right, thank you all for coming. Um, uh, we're very excited to have Pie Junkie here. Pie Junkie, and Darcy, and Leslie. And um, this is our first ever um, celebration of entrepreneurship, women's, um, women's Entrepreneurship Day, which is actually this coming Friday, but it didn't work because Thanksgiving is so early this year. So um, UN recognizes women entrepreneurs because the impact that they have on the economy. They're the fastest growing segment of on the entrepreneurship um, marketplace, and that's not just in the United States, that's around the world. So it's exciting um, that we are recognizing it, and I'm thrilled that you are all here to be part of that today. And I'm going to turn it over to you to let them tell their wonderful story. Okay. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Thank you so much for having us today. This is Lisa and I'm Leslie, and this is Darcy. Um, we're just going to kind of walk you through our journey and um, talk to you about how our process has worked for us. I think every entrepreneur probably has a different path to follow, but this is what our path is. Um, and I think Lisa had said we could do questions afterwards, but if there's a burning question you have just as we're speaking, just go ahead and raise your hand because if you're like me, I'll forget what that question <laughs> is later. So just go ahead and ask, um, and uh, we'll just open this. So if you've got a question, I feel like you have to wait for them. So we thought we, <laughs> this is kind of cheesy, but we thought we would just lay out um, a few points that have um, helped us in our, um, our path. And the first one for us is follow the path laid out for you and be open to an unexpected journey. Darcy and I met, and I was calculating this in my head on the way over here, <laughs> about 10 years ago, when our daughters, both Kates, um, were in preschool together. And for those of you who have children, your friends, be, be, your friends become, uh, are basically your children's parents' friends, is how that kind of <laughs> evolves. Um, so our daughters would play together in school, and then they would get together um, after school and play, and then we figured out that we lived really close to one another, just a few blocks away, and our husbands worked and traveled a lot, and so there were often nights where we were home by ourselves with our kids, um, and we kind of went into survival mode, if you will, and we would say, hey, the guys are gone tonight, come over, I'm going to cook dinner, the kids can play, we can have some wine. Um, it'll be, it'll just make things easier for us. So we started kind of socializing together, living together, mm -hmm. kind of like we started integrating our lives a little bit um, just in that like young new mom situation. <laughs> it's nice to have another adult to talk to yeah. if you've ever been in so that nice. situation. Sometimes so you nice. just want to have a conversation right. with somebody who's not a baby. Right. <laughs> exactly. So as we did that, we learned that we both had a passion for not only cooking, but like feeding our families, and that food had this really special bond for us at our family table. Um, with our extended families, we both had really great relationships with moms and grandmas who had taught us how to cook and how to live in the kitchen um, and build you know, a community around the table. So we started talking, and as we're talking in adult language, um, we were like, this would be great if maybe we could figure something out with this love of food that we have, and maybe there's something that we can do where we can maybe make a little bit of money, because that would be awesome. Um, and we decided that after talking to several of our friends, and, and we, we, have, we have a lot of mutual friends, and our friends are lovely, but so many of them are not cooks. They just they don't cook, and that's okay. But they would say, I'm having a baby shower, I'm hosting a baby shower, and I, can you help me put something together? I've got book club or bongo or, you know, their little social events that they're like, I don't, I don't know what to do, can you just put something together for me? So we thought, you know what, we could probably just start catering a little bit. We can do this on the side and it won't be every day. Um, we can just maybe make a little extra cash. So we started down that path with um, catering. We also thought at the same time, wouldn't it be fun if we had in-home cooking classes for some of these friends of ours who, I joke, we jokingly talk <laughs> about one of our one of our dearest friends who really didn't even know how to boil water properly. She literally called us like, why is this water not boiling? We're like, do you have a lid on it? No. Like just really <laughs> simple things like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not <laughs> her fault. It's just, you know. You just don't know. Yeah. She just had it in her time. 
So we thought, what if we could do a little catering? What if we could um, do some in-home cooking classes? Wouldn't that be fun? We get to be social, we get to use our brains, we'll make a little money, it'll be fun. So we decided if we're gonna do that, if we're gonna do something, we're gonna do it right. So we got all of our proper licensure through the health department. We went to St. Luke's United Methodist Church where Darcy had some connections. They have this huge, beautiful commercial kitchen. And we said, would you let us borrow this kitchen? Can we, you know, can we rent this kitchen from you for time, you know, here and there, time to time? Um, and they said yes. And so we just started down the path. We felt really good. We had the licensure. We had a place to cook. We weren't doing it out of our homes. Um, and so we started catering. We started cooking. Um, we did classes at the, in the kitchen. We did classes in people's homes. It was really fun. Um, and then one day uh, I had a friend who, hi, I had a friend who owned SNG's Burger Joint. It was the very first one they had at 59th and May. There's lots of locations now. But Shannon was a friend of mine, and they had just opened the 59th Street location. And he said, I need a dessert for my restaurant. I don't have time to make, he's actually a very excellent cook. He's like, I just don't have time to kind of work through the dessert. And I don't want to just get a food service dessert. I want a homemade dessert. So could you guys make me a pie? And I was like, okay, yeah, that's, we didn't have cakes in my family. My grandma always made pie. That's all I knew was pie. And my grandma, that's what my grandma had taught me. So I was like, well, that's simple. I'll, yeah, I'll make you a pie. So we made him a pie. I think it was a peach pie, if memory serves. And so we took him a pie and he called like the next day and said, that was great. I need some more, can you bring me two pies? And we're like, yeah, that's great. So we started on this path with Shannon at s &B. And they were so nice to us, they didn't, they could have easily taken credit for and said, yeah, this is our homemade pie. They were really nice to tell their customers, um, yeah, I'm glad you like the pie. Actually, we didn't make it. These two moms who have this little business out of St. Luke's, they made the pie, and you can call them and they'll make one for you. Um, and a lot of restaurants won't necessarily do that, so I always feel very thankful for Shannon um, for doing that for us because that really, I think, was what was the tipping point for us was that he was helping get our name out there. So it's that having a relationship that I always kind of, when I was younger, I would always kind of be like, oh, I'm networking, whatever. That's just <laughs> such a, you know, that's such a silly term. Business, business, business. Business, business, whatever, you know. <laughs> okay, so it was networking. It really did mean something for me. <clears throat> um, so as s and B, as you know now knows, they grew, because they started with that one little restaurant, and then they grew, um, they let us grow with them. So pretty soon we were doing pies for like five or six of their restaurants. It was several. Um, and as that happened, other restaurants kind of caught wind of, oh, they so they provide pies. So then we had other places call us and say, would you do pies for our restaurant? as well and so finally at some point we decided that you know what maybe we should just focus on pie um, we like doing the catering it's fun we kind of like doing the cooking classes but at that point we were really making more progress with the pies we were making a profit um, and at this point we were in the kitchen at st luke's most days monday through friday most days um, so we decided to change our, originally our, our name was Out of the Box Cooking, which is really cheesy, but yeah. Um, and then uh, Darcy had this great idea to we to change our focus and to really focus on pies, and so we changed our name. And it was, I, look, I had a memory on Facebook the other day, it was 2011, um, and we changed our name officially to Pie Junkie and just focused on pies. We were still doing, yeah. The accountant in me wants to ask this, and it's none of my business yeah. specifically, but at this point, were you making decent money, or were, was it more just, hey, this is growing, this might go into something in the future? We were making, we were not losing money. We were making a little bit of money, but we were, and this is how we're a little different. We were in a situation where we were pretty much reinvesting everything yeah. back into the business mm -hmm. to build. I mean, so by... Traditional business standards, no, it wasn't okay. a lot of money. Yeah, it wasn't. For a couple moms problem. in a church kitchen doing something that we loved and having some time yeah. to have an adult conversation and use our brains in a different way, that made it worthwhile for us at the time. And the, and the business started out, and, and really, we try really hard to continue to keep the focus on um, 
being a small business, being local, being family oriented. We're not out to, you know, bring in bazillions of corporate orders and things like that. So it, in some ways, it was kind of an intentional decision to kind of reinvest and kind of keep things small. Yeah. So, so I think the short answer is. Oh, yeah, and by enough that I was like, oh, I'm paying for my kids' dance class every month or something like. Enough that it meant something to my family, but not like where I could. The job. Pay your husband to quit. <laughs> right, we're right. still not telling we're anybody to quit their job. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as that grew, we had grown our wholesale business. We were doing lots of wholesale business with various restaurants in town. Um, we were still doing at that time a weekly meal for people. We had an electronic newsletter and we would send it out and folks would order a weekly meal and come to the church and pick it up. Um, and we were in the kitchen, you know, four or five days a week. St. Luke's at this point was really growing. They're a large church. Um, they have a daycare center on premise too. So that kitchen is very busy. So they had hired a full-time chef, and he was, we'll talk about him later, he was wonderful to us to help us because he'd opened lots of restaurants. Um, but he he was in the kitchen all the time, so we were starting to kind of step on each other. We were starting to have refrigeration cooler space issues and, and storage issues, and, and they were so nice to us to let us, like, you know, store all of our stuff in there. So finally we were like, you know what, it's time for us to kind of, like, maybe take a step outside the kitchen. We need to start looking for our own space. And we are really slow decision makers. We are a little bit risk averse, um, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. Um, we started looking and we looked at spaces for probably over a year, a year and a half. Spaces. Mm -hmm. It was really important to us that we had something that was fairly close to where our homes were because we had school age children by this time. Um, we wanted a, an area where we felt like there was going to be some up and coming growth or there was a good amount of traffic there. Uh, we didn't just want, we, we knew we needed a good partner and a landlord. We didn't have tens of thousands of dollars to, you know, completely reconstruct a new building. And we spent time looking at neighborhoods and, and business districts and we sat on benches and watched things and watch cars and foot traffic come and go and we finally settled on we were approached by again relationships by the way <laughs> um, Shannon had introduced us to um, a gentleman who was doing lots of work in automobile alley um, he had done all of that and I'm down Broadway and he was starting to do some work in the Plaza District which is on 16th Street and he had introduced us to him and he came back to us and said you know what I bought this building in the Plaza District I'm interested in putting a bakery in. I know what you guys are doing. Would you consider coming to this building? And it, the plaza was not an area we had necessarily really considered too much. It was up and coming for sure. But we were like, we're not young. <laughs> we really, I remember driving through there looking for hipsters. Like, we thought that the whole area was only hipsters because that's the reputation that it had at the time. Sure. still does. It's, there's quite a few. Yeah, yeah, we tend to. We, we're the moms. Yeah, we're the moms of the. I'm probably the oldest awesome business bad grainy, owner. Bad and the, yeah, bad, bad grainy. Grainy's the official mom. But she's, she's way more hip and cool than I am. <laughs> um, yeah, so we just. We, can, we sat in the Plaza District at different times of day. We watched cars go by, we watched foot traffic go by. And decided, you know what, we probably could make this work because they have it's a nice walkable district, and that's not something that we have in other parts of Oklahoma City. And we decided that we had so much wholesale business that we're like, you know what, we can. We worked with our, our landlord, and we thought we can make this work because we have all of this wholesale business. It will help keep us afloat. If we happen to have a couple of people come in a day and buy a slice or two, that would be great. We need that, but it'll be okay. We had. When we opened the business, we thought we were going to still be doing primarily wholesale business and not necessarily the retail side of business, which was the slices and pies and so. <laughs> That's all the business business numbers number. But it was, um, I can let Darcy talk about that because she's, she's. Oh yeah, I've got that later. Oh, you have that later? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, so we opened 
in the Plaza District in May of 2013. Um, we grossly underestimated the, I guess, the traffic that we would have from the start. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you want to just skip to that? Sure. I, don't know I took my I'll first class the week oh, after wait. they opened. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh. The Was week after that you soon? opened. Mm -hmm. The week after you opened. Wow. I brought my first class. Well, all right. <laughs> and you were like, okay, we don't really know what to say. Because we just opened. Yeah. Well, we first. have a lot. Yeah, that was probably it. Like, I, I think that was a lot. Of this that. was right when we opened that opening night. Um, we had a line out the door and down the sidewalk. It was the most <coughs> wonderful and terrifying experience of my life. Truly. Because I saw the crowd and it was amazing to feel that supported, but it was also. What I think what was significant about that particular night, there were a couple things going on. We were making this pretty significant leap. Two risk-averse people were making a pretty significant leap into the Plaza District before it exploded. So there was a certain amount of uncertainty happening just with the area. We had no, what, no idea what to expect. We also didn't advertise, and we'll talk about social media here in a minute. Um, we had a little bit of business from the, our folks at SMB who had passed people our way. We had some other connections that we had built a, a mailing list and we're doing electronic newsletters and a little bit of social media. Um, so we didn't have any idea about the pool of people who might be interested in, in coming to Pie Junkie. So we made our best guesses and um, did our best to prepare. And we had our husbands working. We had we hired two people, and we thought that was like extravagant to have two staff members when we opened the shop. And now we have um, 18 staff members. Uh, so it's definitely grown and evolved from that particular night. Um, but I did want to make a couple of quick points about you know kind of Leslie gave you the the story of how we got started, and I think there's a couple of things that we learned along the way that might be helpful. If you're thinking about a, a business, um, a business plan. I know you probably hear in your classes, have a business plan, have a business plan, have a business plan. We did actually have a business plan. It was written out and it was defined as Leslie said. It was, we're gonna go in homes, we're gonna do cooking classes, we're gonna have these prepared meals. And um, we obviously didn't sit down and decide to have a pie shop. And I, and I think that's what's cool about a business plan is it forces you to be intentional it makes you think about what your business is, but it also makes you think about diverting from that path. And that's kind of why we have that slide, you know, following the path as it's laid out before you. We were on a path, but because of all of these wonderful opportunities that we had with being able to rent the kitchen at St. Luke's and with Shannon at s &B, that forced us to stop and think, okay, the pie thing is kind of happening. Should we divert from what our plan is? And there were a lot of conversations and significant thought of, yes, we can. Let's change our name to Pie Junkie. Let's be very specific. Let's really focus in on doing one thing. And, and so for me, I'm, I'm the planner. Um, and, and sometimes <laughs> I'm like, oh, we're not sticking to the plan. But really, if you have a plan, it does force you to be intentional about the choices. And it is OK to divert and deviate from that plan so long as you're always reevaluating. And even five years into our storefront, we evaluate every day, every year. We're going into Thanksgiving, like we're living in it now. And every year we really dig deep and look at what worked, what didn't, what can we improve, what can we do to make the customer's experience better, what can we do to make our staff member's experience better. So anyway, I just wanted to say a word about you know, we have this path that we followed, but it also was some very intentional choices, like the business plan, like sitting in the plaza. I mean, we were like psycho. They probably thought we were stalking some businesses because we would drive up and down, back and forth, and just sit and watch. Um, so there, were, there was a lot of intentionality in those decisions. I think the other, um, one other document that really helped us was something that's called a pro forma. Um, did you want to talk about that now, or did yeah. you want to talk about that with Scott? We can talk about it with But the pro forma is something that is a document that essentially we 
put together numbers that said if we sell this this many things, this is how we can keep the lights on, how we can just basically kind of subsist. If we sell this much, this is how maybe we can start to turn a little profit or maybe be able to hire some people. And then if we are able to sell this much, we kind of have a low, medium, high. This is when um, this would, where we would want to strive to be. But I think what's always funny is that we're like, oh, we'll never sell that much. That's no, that will never happen. You know? And our husbands were like, you're totally going to sell that much. They were, I think, always really big cheerleaders for us. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a document that was really helpful too, along to kind of dovetail into the business plan because it wasn't just having the plan which we always go back to, but then for someone like Darcy who loves numbers, it's really good for her to have a finite document that's like, but no, we have to do this to keep the lights on. So, um, something that we were able to do even before we moved to the Plaza District was we built a small following on social media, specifically Instagram. We um, to date, that is our most popular platform um, because it's picture-based. People eat with their eyes. So for us, Instagram is really important. We do have a presence on Twitter and Facebook, but um, Instagram by far for us is really important. So we were able to have this small audience already built on social media. So when we said, hey guys, guess what? We're opening a storefront. We already had people plugged in who knew, who were able to follow our journey with us, and that really helped because then they were able to kind of cheer us on as we went, ask questions, and then they were able to spread the word too about our business. So social media, again, it's just one of those things where at first I was like, yeah, we should probably do this, we, you know, whatever, but social media has actually turned out to be something really important for us because advertising is very expensive. Um, social media is not. I mean, I think you have to work at social media, but... Um, social media is something that is, ha was really, really key for our business. Um, <laughs> these are some of our early social media pictures. They're not great. Um, so yeah, like there's a slice of cherry pie. I remember that was at a teacher luncheon. Um, we thought we were so fancy. Oh man, I had to have the ribbon. Oh my gosh, yeah. the ribbon, so important at that this time. This was our second... <laughs> Maybe our second or third Thanksgiving, and we made 75 pies, and you thought... No, we thought we were going to die. I think we thought we were going to die. Um, <laughs> to be clear, next week we will make about 1,500 pies. So, by comparison. Um, for the day before Thanksgiving. That's just, just that, that one day. Just that one day. Um, but, yeah, so this was some of our early pictures on social media, which you see, you know, we're, we're trying. We're putting it out there, but... Not great. This is more of our current social media. Um, we had the opportunity to work with Google last year, randomly. They chose us um, um, to represent Oklahoma in an um, economic impact study, and they brought us out to Mountain View. It was a really amazing experience. They actually have been really active in Oklahoma City in the past year. It's mm -hmm. pretty great. You should um, keep an eye for that if they ever do their seminars. They're very, their seminars are great. Their seminars are really fantastic. Um, so that was an opportunity that we had in their Grow with Google event. Um, this is how our photography has changed <laughs> to show a slice of pie similar to the cherry. We've learned a little bit more about lighting. We've learned um, about how to make things just look a little bit more appetizing. And then something that's really important for us is this is not about us. This is about another restaurant. This is actually about Hall's Pizza Kitchen, which is delicious, by the way. Um, we have found that some of, the, some of the most liked or interacted with posts actually don't have to do with us. When we're promoting somebody else or talking about somebody else or their business, um, people love to talk about other things. And so it's nice sometimes to not always just be about me, 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 it is nice to put the focus on somebody else, and people love that. Mm -hmm. They really do. I, I was really surprised by that. Um, but we talk about other restaurants, we talk about other small businesses in town, and I, it, I, I love to do that. Well, in, uh, the, in the, the plaza, you do a lot about the plaza. Yeah, we have a lot of neighbors that are doing a lot of great things in the plaza, yeah. yeah. And I think that's part of... You know, social media should reflect your brand identity in a lot of ways, and I think that's what 
Leslie and our manager, Emily, they both really put out there that we believe strongly in local business in um, keeping things um, small and approachable. So they do a really great job of promoting other businesses, making sure people know that we really care about our community. We care about other business owners. We don't care just about getting you to buy a, a slice of pie. Of course we want you to, but it's a, it's a larger, it's a larger issue and we don't take ourselves too seriously. Yeah, and I have some other pictures later in the presentation that we we really don't. And so these are actually some of our most dignified posts. <laughs> well, there's a definite point of view. I think and as, as yeah. you look at people's social media as you're thinking about what you may do, there's some that do have a very dignified approach or a very aesthetically beautiful approach or kind of shabby chic approach. Like you'll see their brand through what they promote. And ours is a little bit... Let's have some fun with it. It's just pie, y'all. So. Yeah, I think when we want to take what you know, kind of like a beauty shot, we can do that. But sometimes we just want to be silly. We love to take pictures or post pictures of folks that are in our shop that you know we like to sing happy birthday to them. We might post a video of that. We love little kids. Have we have some great pictures of little ones with you know their faces all messy, and we we love that. And we like to put our staff on there doing this like silly things and, and ourselves like dumping out an entire case of pecans on the yeah, floor yeah like it's we okay that <laughs> yeah that may or may not have happened that has happened <laughs> so um i'll let you talk about this yeah uh so something that i think we found um along the way is you know there's people who like to be the smartest person in the room and that's great what we found is let's not be that person we know that there's a lot of people with great experience that we need to help us do this We've learned a lot about pie. We've learned a lot about baking commercially. Uh, but there's so many resources out there that you may not even realize that you have. I know we both took classes at the get-go and learned as much as we could. Um, but the thing that helped us most was finding people with great expertise. Um, so Leslie mentioned the chef that at St. Luke's earlier. He happened to have a background in opening restaurants. So he kind of knew a lot of the math that went behind it. And just as we would cook together in the kitchen, he would share a lot of his knowledge. And we had him help us put together our first pro forma, the spreadsheet that kind of outlines what we think our expenses are going to be and what we think our sales are going to be. And I remember looking at the line item for utilities because I was like, it's a thousand square feet. I mean, my house, come on, the electric bill's not that bad. He was like, no, nope, you're going to need over a thousand dollars for your utilities. And we thought he was insane. Like, that's crazy. Uh, but he was absolutely like on the nose right. So we quickly realized how much we don't know. Um, so having him as a resource to help us with the nitty gritty of what happens in a restaurant kind of served as a consultant for us was tremendous. Um, we often say that some of the best money we ever spent was on a real estate attorney. And at the time we were like, oh my gosh, this is so much money. Uh, but it was so worth it. And I think, and especially here lately, five years down the line, her expertise in negotiating our lease and the things that she made sure were in our lease, we are seeing that pay out even now. So just would encourage you to make sure that that is, that is part of your business plan as well. Invaluable to have somebody with that kind of knowledge. Um, then we also <coughs> touched on a landlord. You know, we were looking in a lot of different places um, we wanted to kind of stay near Midtown area because people were used to coming to St. Luke's to pick up their pies, so we didn't want to deviate too far. Uh, so we looked at a huge number of properties, and it's really interesting. Very quickly, you can tell what kinds of landlords are there. They just want to cash your check. They don't care what you're selling in that space. They have no concern at all just so long as you're going to pay them. There's a different kind of landlord who is looking for a long-term partner. <coughs> and we met a couple of those along the way and ultimately ended up with our current landlord who was doing a lot of work in the plaza. But it was readily, it was very quickly evident that he wanted us to be there a long time and he recognized that it was in his best interest as a landlord to help us make sure that our business succeeded because he wanted to get his rent checked too. Um, but I think that is something finding those partnerships has become very important. Um, let's flip it. Other Any? husbands. Yes, I was gonna. Oh yeah, partners. Yeah, we yeah. do pictures. Yeah, yeah. pictures. Do, do the next picture. So um, we talked about our wholesale business a little bit at the beginning. Iron Star is great. 
If y'all have been to Iron Star, you know it's great. Um, so we were fortunate to have Iron Star and S and B as part of our wholesale business in the beginning, and we really felt like at the time that was going to be our bread and butter, that our whole pro forma was built on restaurants and growing that side of the business because we weren't sure if anybody was going to come walking through our door in the plaza. We just didn't know. Um, so what we found was it actually turned to be opposite that our wholesale business became a small percentage of our sales and our retail business became a large percentage of our sales. So we recognized that that, that was a little bit different and we needed to shift gears. And we did you know, reevaluate our wholesale program and we found that our best wholesalers were really the people who viewed us as partners, like Iron Star, like S&B. They took care of our product. It was important to them how they served it. And those were the kinds of restaurants that we knew we wanted to work with. So we have been really fortunate to have partners um, like them. And then we'll talk about the boys. Um, <clears throat> here are some of our family partners. I don't have my girls up there, but these are Darcy's kids. Are they cute? Mm -hmm. so they were cuter when they were younger. <laughs> now they're like, now they're old and high school and middle school angsty yeah so I like to see them they're cute <laughs> our families were really supportive not just supportive but our, our um, husbands both have expertise in different areas um, my husband had opened a business before and had a lot of sales and marketing background and Darcy's husband actually works in a corporate food business and so he had a lot of knowledge and so it was nice to have that not just you know kind of moral support from them but also they ask a lot of critical questions and they are excellent at spreadsheets <laughs> both are excellent <laughs> which is good because I'm very not excellent at spreadsheets <laughs> I have a lot to learn about if you thing. haven't picked up on this like she's like numbers numbers and I'm like it's gonna be great let's just do this thing <laughs> so, yeah so that's how this that's how this thing works um, but yes, yeah, so our families were, were very supportive, and our husbands specifically ask a lot of questions, dug in there with us. We'll do anything from, let me see that spreadsheet. They still get the profit and loss every month and ask questions, and we have a conversation with them every month about um, how things are looking. And But if we need them to come and do dishes at the shop, they'll come and do dishes at the shop. They'll work their register for us. Like They'll do, they are truly partners with yeah. us in that regard. Except we don't let them work the register anymore because they sell things. Yeah. My husband's in sales like, and he just is like, what, you need a pie in five minutes? Yeah. Great. We don't Not make that problem. flavor, we'll figure it out. Come on, you know, he's, <laughs> he's excellent at his sales job, for sure. Yes. Um, did you want me to talk about that? Oh, that was a question we had had, had we get it before. Okay. So I just, Somewhat, sometimes people ask what's it like to partner with a friend. Um, I yeah, people only, told us not to. I will say us, that. Yeah, people right. The sure. ninety yeah. percent of the people we talked to were like, "That's insane. It will ruin your relationship. Yeah. Do not have a partner in business at all ever." It was a, a lot of what we well, got. Especially because you're then mixing in husbands as well. and children. And yeah, and children. Yeah, it, it's a gamble probably, yeah. but it's hard. I think at the end of the day, the easiest way to explain it is Darcy and I are really different. We are different, very different personalities, but our goals are the same. We get to um, the same result in a different way, but we are always working towards the same goal. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what works for us. And we're a good balance, and that's not to say that there haven't been times that we haven't been frustrated with, with each other. Although I will say I don't think we've ever had like a knockdown drag out where there's ever, Oh, yeah, we haven't no, got to like, there's, we're not speaking. <laughs> no, that's just not, we don't operate that way. But, um, you know, there, sure, there have been times when, you know, Darcy will say, like, hey, I need you to bring your big idea head down, and we have to do this by the numbers. Like, we, I, I, I need you to do this. And sometimes I'm like, you have got to loosen up. Like, <laughs> this is going to freak out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. We'll just see how it goes, and we'll figure it out along the way. Which, when you're a planner, is not necessarily what you want to yeah, hear about. Yeah, I'm the one with all the notes over here. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, so for us, it has worked. I, I won't necessarily say that it, you know, I, I know it is a gamble, but it has worked for us. But I often think it's because we are so different in, in our kind of life approach, but our, our goals and objectives are always the same. So Maybe having your husbands involved in that both, so there's total transparency has actually helped. 
with that because yeah. you know you go home and it's like well why'd you decide to do that you explain it mm -hmm. they have doubts and that feeds maybe having it open like this has actually mm -hmm. helped overall well what's funny is our husbands are like I would say my husband probably identifies more with Darcy because mm -hmm. he's more like spreadsheets and numbers and graphs and let's figure this out and her husband's more kind of like the artist style. so yeah I sometimes identify with Matt so I think it's this you know so they're opposite and we're opposite and we're opposite and so it, I think it just always is a good conversation for all of us mm -hmm. to have that way. We pay attention to why we think in a different way mm -hmm. and I think if we were just coming at it as well this is my perspective and this is my perspective it would be harder to find that common ground but I think we really pay attention to you know, Leslie's very respectful of me being like slow and steady wins the race let's get these numbers let's be you know a pro have a process about it and make sure that it's logical and then so I think she shows me a lot of grace in that and, and vice versa so comfort level what makes you comfortable comfortable yeah cool yeah um okay well we always this is like our kitchen mantra do one thing and do it well we have been asked from the beginning of time well, well, pie is great. Can you make me some cupcakes and make me some cookies? And I'm like, I could. They won't be awesome. Like you can, you should go to Cuppies and Joe or somewhere else. They make really great cupcakes. We just feel like really clearly from the start when we decided to focus on pie and pie junkie, we know it's a very narrow space, but that's what we know. We don't want to be all things to all people because that's when you you dilute your product. Um, and, and I know it is probably somewhat of a gamble too as well, but we just have always felt passionately about pie is what we know. Um, we don't want to dabble in other spaces. It's not something that necessarily interests us. And so we have built our business around that. Um, yeah, I think we would rather send somebody to a place that makes great cookies or great cupcakes, French macarons were asked for on occasion. Um, we would rather send a customer to an expert in that area and hope that they'll appreciate that and come back and see us when they need a pie because we think that's a better long-term path to gaining a customer rather than doing some one-off thing that we don't feel good about. I think the other point to be made for this is, you know, as we talked about earlier that Darcy and I felt really passionate from the beginning about building this kind of community around food, is we feel really passionate about having good customer service. And that means when someone walks in the door, they're in our shop, welcome to our home. Um, that means we're greeting them at the door, we're smiling, um, we are interacting with them and helping them feel as comfortable in our space as we would feel if we were welcoming them into our home. And so for us, I think that's another space where we've taken ownership. Is every day perfect? No, <laughs> it's not perfect. Um, but that's something that's really important to us because we want people to feel good while they're there and when they leave. And so we, have, like Darcy works endlessly and our manager, we have an amazing manager, they work endlessly with our staff um, on providing the best customer service we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we're gonna have one product, we wanna make sure the people that are serving that product are 100% excited. And I think we tell our staff the first day that they start, if they're starting at the counter, is the very first thing, like Leslie said, greet the customer at the door. The second thing is your job is to help them find what they need. Even if we don't have it in stock, even if we can't take their order for Thanksgiving because we're already filled up, your job is to find something that will work for them. So we really empower them to problem solve and walk through the, with the customer what will work for them. And then the last thing is if there is a problem, if there is a mistake, or if there is something that they're upset about, make that problem your own. And I think that's what we found is the best way to help customers who may, um, who may be upset or who may not have met their expectations. If we're taking on that issue as ours and not, oh, sorry, I had a problem, if we're taking it on and actively trying to solve it, then we've gotten the best response. And that's something that we really are proud of is how um, our customer service, we feel like, is, is really solid. I, I hate to interrupt, but I have a question. 
and it's kind of nitty gritty, but remember the issues with the first year or two with the apples? With the apples. Yeah. The apples and how you yeah. dealt with that and then the lines, the key lines. Oh, okay. So um, we had, we, I think part of owning at this day and age any business is um, dealing with um, not just customers and their feedback, dealing with their online feedback. Um, we've been pretty lucky in that front. It will keep you up at night. It does me anyway. Um, we, one of our, the first years that we were in business, we had a gentleman um, reach out to us and say, hey, I got the apple pie. Um, it was fine, except that the apples, I've had it before, the apples really weren't cooked as like they normally were. They seemed firm. They were almost a little raw. And we were like, oh gosh, well, that's embarrassing. Okay. So what we did is instead of just being like, okay, great, thanks, you know, we know what we're doing. Um, we looked at our process and we had determined that we had just changed our apples and to a different style of apple. And what we determined is that they needed to be pre-cooked. Normally we were just putting raw apples into the pie and that had worked, but we had changed to a different style and that was not working. And that gentleman was absolutely correct that, um, when they we were evaluated just a little it, thicker. they were just a little bit thicker. Just a they little, were, slightly thicker. And it impacted cooking. the final product. Yeah. And we were like, wow, thank you so much. I mean, we had probably sent out several pies by that point that was like, mm -hmm. but we were able to fix it. Um, because, you know, that's the one thing with pie, for saying the whole pie, I, it's, we can taste all the feeling, fillings and do everything we can, but once it goes out as a whole pie, it's, you know, I, I had no way of knowing that. So I was very appreciative. Mm -hmm. But I think you have to listen to your customers and what they're saying and not just blow them off. Sometimes, I will temper that by saying, sometimes if someone writes a negative review, you have to look at the tone of it. And sometimes people walk into the shop and they're projecting all their frustrations from the day on you and that you're just one more problem in their day. And so you have to kind of compartmentalize those folks, but there are a lot of folks who want you to do well and they want you to know, hey, this was different this time or this just wasn't quite right. And I think it's really important to listen to customers when they say that, because in this case, it was absolutely correct. Um, and then the line situation, <laughs> um, this is, I can let Darcy talk about this because this is like numbers, numbers, numbers. Ooh. So we heard all these crazy stories about what was going on with limes a couple of years ago. And I don't know if you remember going to restaurants and you get like a tiny little wedge of a lime. Um, so we make a key lime pie and we're like juicing limes by hand. And the case price went from $17 to $120 a case for lime. Right. I know. <laughs> so I'm a spreadsheet like going crazy. And, uh, so we we had to drop back and go, we, we can't make that product and have it by the slice. Uh, we had to reprice it. We weren't promoting it. We weren't making extras. But if, if somebody called us and wanted one, we would make it. We just had to charge a higher price to kind of account for uh, what was happening in the market. And but not that much higher, if surprisingly. <laughs> I was thinking. You know, we you tried didn't make to hardly bring, any money on it. We did not, and, and that was an intentional decision that we we wanted our customers to to come back and not give up on the key lime pie. So we made the price so we would basically break even. Uh, we weren't making a ton of money off of it at that point in time, but we were able to get people what they wanted because um, you know pie junkie. We're trying to keep them addicted. You got to keep feeding that addiction. Uh, but it was a really kind of baffling time. We were hearing all these stories about uh, minefields being flooded because the drug cartels were coming through. And it was all these kind of crazy stories we were hearing about what was happening. I don't know what was true. Not but true. all we knew was it went from $17 a case to $120 a case, and that was not going to work with our, with our pricing. So um, you do have to listen not only to your customers, but also to you have to pay attention to your food cost and the other things that are happening as soon as we think we have it figured out, we get thrown a curveball, and we just have to be ready for those. Um, here's just some more pictures. This is Darcy teaching one of our staff I members. Remember that. I mean, this is early on. Celia really only works in the front, so it's funny I put this in here because it's funny because Celia never crumbs pies. It's really good. She also, by the way, I think part of the reason I put it, this in here is Celia started with us our very first night that we opened in May of 2013. She's still with us part-time. She's a pre-K teacher by day. She's been a pre-K teacher for 20 years. 
um, and she drives to Purcell every day. Um, but she comes and works on Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings still. Um, but I, we adore Celia. And then the other one is just part of that kind of like we like to have fun with our customers. We have this little, you know, the little sign that we can change um, on our counter, and we our customers often giggle about it. And so this is one that was not too long ago, which was the I'm just a girl standing in front of a salad asking it to be my junkie. So, haha. Ha. <laughs> um, so we wanted to talk a little bit about culture. Um, We've got a great product. We work really hard to have good service, but our staff is so important in what makes that happen. And I don't know what planet we were on when we thought we were opening a shop and that we could both be in the back kind of making some pies and I'd run up to the front and check out a customer if they wanted to come in and buy something. Fortunately, that turned out to be not possible and that we actually needed to hire some staff. Um, we're really lucky. Right now, it's really hard to find to find people. It is a very difficult uh, job market as an employer, um, but we have some wonderful people who work very hard, and so we we know we're not a big company with lots of benefits, uh, so we try to make the environment as positive as possible. Um, so we do things like eat together, and I know that sounds silly, but we have um, particular staff member she is great at making breakfast so we'll just let her kind of pull off and make breakfast for everybody we'll sit down and eat together just to have a moment to nourish yourselves and and be part of the group it builds camaraderie and if it's a crazy busy day we might order in food um, we try to do things that that nourish their souls and their bodies and make them and, and let them know that we care about them um, next week we have a um, a chair massage guy coming when we're preparing for Thanksgiving so we let everybody rotate out and get a little back massage because we know that they're standing for a long time and um, it's hard when you're crimping crest like this for hours on end uh, so we really work hard to make a culture that people want to come to work and we also know that flexibility is important especially with a business like ours um, not being a big company with a lot of other incentives we have some great people who have other interests. Uh, we're in the plaza, it's an arts district, so people are, I think, naturally attracted to the creative nature. So we try to be as flexible as we can. We have a, a staff member who's an actress, and so she will rehearse, she works in the morning, she'll rehearse for shows in the evening and perform on the weekends. And because we're able to accommodate that schedule, she's stayed with us, and I think she likes to work at Pie Junkie because we recognize that and encourage those other outlets for her because it's important to her. Um, we also have other like, moms that work in the mm -hmm. shop and they have to pick kids up at you know two and three o'clock in the afternoon and we have to be I mean it would be hypocritical for us to not be <laughs> mindful of that Bye. when we're in that boat too mm -hmm. so I think that's another way that we and kids are sick kids get sick and that's gonna happen and so we just try to be really flexible with our staff members in that way. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's kind of a cheesy mantra, but we have this like work hard, play hard mentality in the kitchen. We it's hard. We work really hard. We do a lot of things, but when we play, we play. So yeah, you know we like to take silly pictures in our plastic aprons. This yeah, is someone we dressed birthday. up as lunch ladies for Halloween. That we year. we dared her just to like dive in and eat the whole cake. We're like, yes. Um, we like to recognize birthdays. We like to make a big deal of it, out of it. Um, this is Christian. She's hilarious. But this is like her scrubbing down the sink, and she's just, I mean, like, we just try to be silly so that even some of the things that no, no one wants to scrub down a sink, but that's okay. And we just try to, like, have some fun with everybody. You said you send your customers to other places to get cupcakes. So did you? make your own birthday cakes? Or do you, do you um, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. We actually have a couple of ladies on staff who are really good at cakes. And so as of um, recently, we've just been having them make the cakes. But I've gone to places to make cakes, or we've brought in uh, Bell Kitchen donuts, uh, Brown's Bakery donuts. Mm -hmm. um, if someone has a, if they want to celebrate in the morning, we'll say, do you want donuts? Do you want lunch? We'll, we'll order luncheon sometimes for folks. Where do you want to get lunch <coughs> from? You know, we'll do that. Um, and if they want a cake or if it's a special occasion, um, yeah, we, 
most of the time we're getting it probably yeah. from somewhere. Some of them do have side businesses. Yeah. In another way that and that we, we encourage that. Yeah, we do encourage it instead of saying, no, you can't bake anything for anybody else since you work here. We do try to give them the opportunity to make a little side menu with their beautiful cakes mm -hmm. and delicious cakes. Um, yeah, there's me and the monarch butterfly that was in the shop and Christian freaking out per usual. Um, but that's something we put on social media and that's what we're talking about, not taking ourselves too seriously. Is like, yeah, me and the silly butterfly. And really we put it on there because of Christian's face. Because <laughs> we could not laugh at that. And then this is also some of us like not taking yourself too seriously. Push yourself, do 15 push-ups instead of 10, run three miles instead of two, eat a whole pie, chug two milkshakes, you can do anything, we believe in you. Um, and our, our manager does a lot of that. She's really hilarious. And so I think it's, you know, I, I, I hope people understand that we're, we just like to have a little fun. And sometimes the world is a really, not sometimes, the world is a really serious place. And sometimes it's good just to have a little giggle. And, and at the end of the day, it's just pie. It's and just pie, pie tastes better when happy people make it and serve it. Yeah, and that's I agree why with we that. try to have a happy shop. Yeah. So I know we're about it. But anyway, these are all of our um, online presents. And we have a website um, as well, project.com. Yeah, what kinds of questions do you all have? Well, um, I didn't think ahead, so I don't have any plates for the pie. I'll go first. I, I do you have plates? Yeah, okay. Or you can, or you can just open up your thing, and then we and I have pot. So um, awesome. because I thought it would be cruel and unusual to have them talk about pie the whole time and then not serve it. Questions for the last question? Yeah. Did you, did you start out with a select number of different pies, and have you graduated to more? Yes. Yes and no. <laughs> we have some evaluating process. Um, so yeah, we had probably eight to ten that we started with that we put out in our case when we first opened. And then we probably have closer to 14 different slice options available each day. And, um, and then we, we look at the numbers and what's selling, what's not. And some of our staff favorites that we thought would be great, mocha mm -hmm. cream, um, did not sell at all. And so we had to pull those off the menu. Um, something that has helped is we started doing a pie of the month to kind of help some of those flavors that didn't quite make the cut. Uh, once a month we'll have a different flavor available by the slice just for that month so we can um, get those customers back in the door who really love the oatmeal chocolate chip cookie pie and we'll see them during during that month. What flavor do you sell most at Thanksgiving besides Drunken like Turtle is by far every year the highest yeah, it's our best seller year round. That's but what even we at Thanksgiving, today. it's also a, a baffling. I mean, I remember the first year we were like, "Wow, a drunken turtle! What's going on?" Now we used to have a sober turtle, and nobody bought it. So that was another one that we just let go. We're like, oh, everybody wants the bourbon. Is it too late to order? It is. It is. We sold out. Um, I don't even know how many minutes. Um, so yeah, it is. It What's is typically a good time? To, is it a month before. <laughs> We open our orders for Thanksgiving the first Tuesday of November every year. Okay. We open them online at 10. We had so many people hit our website that it crashed and all the backup servers crashed. Oh, um, nice. So it's been a hectic week. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we do the same thing in December. The first Tuesday of December, we open up the days before Christmas and kind of operate the same way. We try to make it as equal of a playing field for everybody as possible to get a pie because we are very limited on space if you've ever been down to the plaza we have a thousand square feet it's very small for our dining room and our kitchen and if we can't put it in the refrigerator then we can't make it so we also the day before thanksgiving we refer to and it's like our social media gold moment mm -hmm. is and we had a staff member that came up with mm -hmm. it we call it black pie day instead of black friday the wednesday before it's called black pie day um, and we will have, we will be making pies all day long so folks can come in. And we usually have a line and we try to make it, again, talk about good customer service. Before we open the shop, there are people walking the line. What flavor are you interested in today? Oh, I'm sorry, that's not, we're not going to have that extra flavor today, but we have these. Can I get you a cup of coffee? Like just really kind of managing expectations, which is something that's really important um, in and we have a wheel life. of prizes. We have just a wheel of prizes that we they can spin. <laughs> the first like twenty people get to spin the wheel, and so we just we we do have that option as well. 
because I just wanted to say Black Friday. Yeah. So there's a question. Do you ever have pies that are not sold that are nearing expiration and you have to get rid of them? And how do you do that? Get yeah. On occasion, uh, fortunately, we're getting to a place where we can kind of anticipate and have a pretty good sense of what we'll sell. Um, but we do, we have a list of a number of nonprofits, and we'll try to connect with, with one of those if we've got an app. Like we've done mobile meals, and Emily took some yesterday. Children's Hospital. Children's Hospital, hospital so, yeah, there's a number of, of, good, of good homes that we can find for those pies. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so my kids forced me to watch about every episode of k <laughs> and, and there's a point where you end up with a warehouse and a staff of 200 and become mm -hmm. something you never want. Right. So how do you balance that on being really good at what you're doing and not going in a direction to make sure you stay kind of true to who you are? You intentionally decide not to expand. And that has been, that's we're, our choice. We're awesome. That's been, that must be a hard decision. It is, because Woo. I think people, yeah, it's hard because the competitive part of me, the like, the prideful part of me wants to be like, I want 50 stores, I want to do yeah. this. Then the rational part of me is like, I've seen how much time away from my family even just having one store has taken, and I'm a control freak. I mean, I, hey, look, and as I said earlier, I'm kind of like the like free spirity one or whatever, but not when it comes to the final product of pie. Like, I'm pulling the pies. Leslie out touches every single pie that goes out the door, every so single one of them. I, I, we've thought about that. If we expand, I have to give up a lot of control, and I don't know that I'm willing to do that. The other thing is our kids are not going to be in our homes much longer. Maybe after they leave and my our lives are different, yeah, maybe. we would consider it we then. We talk about mm -hmm. it, but we've just gotten to a point where it's, it's like Darcy said, it's intentional. We have our space, and I know a lot of people don't understand that, but we're okay with it because mm -hmm. it's the right decision for our families and for us and our sanity. <laughs> yeah. So Someday, maybe. maybe. But, yeah. A quick follow-up statement. Uh, the art side of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So my girls will go home and try to make pie. So what you're doing to encourage people to cook, not just go to a restaurant and buy something that's frozen that was you know, thought out before served. So what you're doing there too is encouraging people to to study the science mm -hmm. of pies. I guess. Well, there is I appreciate a science. That. Yeah, yeah. I, I do appreciate that. I think the other thing I always tell folks, so when we were teaching cooking classes, I would always say, and I truly believe this, just because something doesn't look pretty doesn't mean it doesn't taste good. I mean I've been to plenty of like fancy pants bakeries where it's like everything is just like meticulous and it's gorgeous and then you eat it and you're like well that's all right and then you go to someone's house and they've made something and yeah maybe it you wouldn't see it in a bakery but you eat it and you know they made it and they put their heart and soul into it and it tastes delicious mm -hmm. so I think for us is we want things to look nice but our things do look I think pretty homemade mm -hmm. because every crimp, every crust is crimped. And pie is kind of hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took us a lot of practice. People all the time get really frustrated and we're just like, you know, it took me a long time to get the crimping down and the rolling and it's hard. But yeah, I appreciate that because we do want to make it from yeah. scratch. We do have, we've had several people come in the shop and be like, do you make these here? And we have an open kitchen and like, we're back here covered <laughs> in flour and rolling. And, Yes, we make everything here by, from scratch. So I appreciate that comment very much because we do really work hard to put heart and soul in it. Mm -hmm. How many pies did y'all have for your Thanksgiving? Well, we have over a thousand, but it depends on the day of. We'll make extra for the day of, and then we'll keep baking. So I won't know what our oh, final okay. number will be yet, but historically it's been around the 1600 mark probably. 15, 16, yeah. And that's for that day. Um, How's that compared to pie day? Oh. Pie day is very different because it slices. slices. Yeah. So we shut everything down. We bring in extra coolers and do only whole pies going out on Black Pie Day. But on March 14th Pie Day, we're just doing slices. And so it is a little bit different. I can't even remember how many slices we did. I think it was over 1,000. I think it's like 2,000. I think it was 2,000. We've been doing like about, I think the past years have been about 2,000 slices on pie day. And then the, what's funny story though, is the first year that we were really getting going on pie, we, there's a pie day, P-I-E day, on in like January 23rd. Mm -hmm. and we made this big deal, we, it was before we had our shop, we 
like went to SMB and we set up oh samples and stuff and everyone's like, I don't know what this PI day is and I don't know. <laughs> right. No but then we got to March 14th and we had really no idea about PI day. And everyone's like, why aren't you doing something on PI day? Because we tried to do something on PI day and you guys just wouldn't do anything. the pie. So we've always been really surprised that PI day is like the real, like people will turn out now for PIE day, but more people turn out for PI day. It's crazy. Yeah. Good, sir. I now have a question, but I got to set it up so we can really understand. Okay. Um, we used to have uh, pie every Sunday. Uh, my grandpa ate with us. So grandma uh, and my mother put the, the big pie for him. Christmas was my day because whoever wanted a pie, you just choose which, which one you want and then they would make it. So I wanted cherry pie, dad wanted lemon meringue, grandpa, potato, everybody got the exact pie that they wanted. But when it came time to serve the, the pies after dinner, then they would all come up and say, I want a piece of that cherry pie. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, that's my cherry pie. And I was like, back off my cherry. Why didn't you ask for that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. It was so very, very hard for me to be, um, you know, have to show humility on that day. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So my question is, can you make a cherry pie like my mom? <laughs> oh, we don't try to compete with moms or grandmas. <laughs> that is dangerous business. Yeah. Uh, we make a cherry pie, but I can't. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Know. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> um, Really you do grandma's. your best. Yeah, grandma's. It's it's rare. Special. To find uh, to, uh, you know, like, you know, go out and buy yeah. a pie like they they can make. But I have, to, you know, there have been a few people that can uh, that can do that. Replicate it. I will say that our traditional cherry pie is not like the canned pie filling. It's really just tart cherries and sweet cherries and some sugar. Um, mixed together. We're trying out a new cherry pie actually today. I had put it in the oven right before I left. Um, that's a cherry crumble pie. Uh -huh. That's a little gooier filling. Um, it's a little bit of a departure for us, but um, we're going to start trying that. But yeah. I'm inspired. I'm going to have to come over to you. Yeah, come see us. We always have cherry. I eat cherry pie by the slice on Tuesdays, so come see us tomorrow. Or next. Well, next Tuesday will be closed, but Tuesdays, or we call them cherry pie Tuesdays. That's one of those flavors, as you were talking about. And I know this sounds crazy because cherry pie seems like such like it would just be a staple. Cherry pie was one of those flavors that actually didn't sell crazy well. Um, and so we dedicated a day to it so we could point people who really love the cherry pie, Tuesday's your day. You know you really got to have it, Tuesday's your day. You can order a whole one anytime, but if you want to slice a cherry pie, Tuesday's your day. And that was kind of an example of us trying to figure out how can we appease this crowd of folks, but that <coughs> it's not necessarily a fit for us through the whole week. All right. I'm so come see it Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah. Looking back from your beginning till now, is there anything that you would have done differently? Mm -hmm. uh, we would have stopped differently straight away. Oh yeah, that was the, probably the main thing we did not see coming was needing to staff up. And thankfully we did. We're very grateful for that problem. But it was, I mean, we had somebody we hired on Saturdays and somebody we'd hired to come in the afternoons and we thought the two of us could kind of handle the morning by ourselves in the early afternoon. So yeah, so definitely ramping up, stopping earlier would have, would have been nice. Yeah, we really underestimated that, I think. Um, I think it was partially because we're risk averse. We're like, we can do it. We don't yeah. need to pay, you know, some we can do this. And very quickly, I think you realize is that you surround yourself with partners, is that you have to have other people helping you. So I would definitely say that. Yes. So as tenants in the whole kind of midtown area, are, do you have a voice in the parking? <laughs> is that, do you guys get hit with that? That's customer? probably our biggest complaint yeah. is parking in the plaza. And it has changed significantly in the last five years uh, because there's just more happening down there, more people wanting to come in. Um, but, you know, that's kind of the, the trick about urban areas. And the plaza is designed to be a walkable district. Uh, with There's big sidewalks and really encourage people to ride bikes and um, and come down and park and stay and walk around uh, but that in terms of you know, the city we 
who work with the city. There's a new parking lot that has opened in the district that's larger, uh, but it still is a challenge. Aren't they talking about a parking garage just to the west, east? I thought they were, to my knowledge, talking about that at the chamber. Not to my knowledge. For your wholesale pipe business, do you deliver? We do. We subcontracted delivery service. Now, in the beginning, when we were driving up to 59th Street, it was Leslie and I taking turns in our car <laughs> driving up to sure. the S and B. And there were a lot of things that we did early on that we just did to get our name out and get established. And we didn't charge for delivery. Um, we did a lot of um, kind of fundraisers that we would donate our product to and have the opportunity to go and talk to customers about. So we did a lot of things for free, really, in the beginning just until we could get a, a, a foothold. But now we use a third party that uh, comes and she's great. She comes every Tuesday and Friday and knows her way around the shop and takes the pies. And um, um, we're really fortunate to have them as partners too. Laura's first. Go ahead, Kim. Go ahead. Um, you had mentioned that it was kind of difficult to find help right now. And I just wondered if there were specific skills that people seem to be lacking or do you guys need like specialized stuff you know what exactly were the difficulties with that the, the unemployment unemployment rate rate is really low and so people have their choice and so it can be hard for anybody when that's the the situation it's great for yeah. our workforce uh, but there's just fewer opportunities for us to to find good people um, we've had really good success with our social media because those are the people that know us and they know our culture and, and appreciate our product. So if we put something out on social media to make a hire, um, that's where we've had the greatest success. Uh, things like we've tried Indeed and we did find some folks on Indeed, uh, but it's, a, it's a, a lot to sort through so that it is more of a time consuming prospect when you open it up to that kind of wide of a Agree. It does depend on the position because my yeah. positions do require because I do more like what they call back of the house, um, which is the kitchen work. And so you don't have to have gone to culinary school. I didn't go to culinary school, but um, there it is good for someone to have experience in a commercial kitchen. Um, so there are certain things we do look for in back of the house that are different from what mm -hmm. Darcy looks for in front of the house. So, but we have resources there, you know, through some of the vocational schools here in town. They have programs, and we can go through them. And but a lot of times, too, in social media, for even those positions, those folks are looking and following restaurants and bakeries that they're interested in as well. So I'm I'm going to follow up with that. Real quick. Sure, go just right one on. question, <laughs> just because we keep saying this in class. Okay. Show up, mm -hmm. be on time, mm -hmm. put your phone down, mm -hmm. be responsible. Um, take direction, listen, try to work with others. What else? Don't lick the bowl. No. I don't know. <laughs> no, we do a lot of that. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. If you're walking that bowl back to the dish plate yeah. and that spoon just happens to go, break? that's fine. Cool. Yeah. Well, just wash your hands afterwards. Yeah. 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 Showing up. Oh, the Pretty showing cool. up. Just mm -hmm. show up. Yeah. And we don't, part of our culture too, and I think we didn't really touch on this, is that we don't, you're, we're there to train our employees. We're there to work with them, to help them grow. Whether they want to own their own business someday, which we have some that do, and we have, actually my head baker left four months ago and she's getting ready to open her own shop and we could not be prouder of her. Um, but also there's, you know, lots of young folks there. And so we're just, our goal is to train. So while we're there, we're not like, you did that wrong, don't do that way again, whatever. Our goal is to figure out how to give corrections that are positive and say, okay, so that didn't work out, it's okay, but we need you to try again. And this time, let's try it this way. And so we try to have somewhat of a teaching mm -hmm. kitchen, I think, and that I think that has helped too with some of the longevity of some of our employees is that we're not there to give admonishments, we're there to help make them a more fully rounded employee. So you said that you hired a real estate attorney. Mm -hmm. Are there other services that you've hired out for where somebody has expertise in an area that you don't, like accounting, you know, payrolls, mm -hmm. things like that? I, don't that. Yeah. <laughs> I, t I taught myself 
QuickBooks and some accounting, um, but, but that's something that we kicked around before. So Leslie manages the kitchen, and then I do more of the uh, front of house um, hiring, training, and then all the other random random things like accounting, paying bills, working with wholesale customers, things like that. We've, so. we've gotten some consulting in HR. Yes. Because yes. that's definitely there, and that is ever evolving. Yes, and, and speaking about workforce and you know, people not showing up, and, you know, there, you know, there's a lot of legalities that I think we have. We want to do it right, so we have hired out for legal and um, yeah, HR. I've got a class to go to, but thank you for coming. Thanks. And thank you. Yeah. you this is John Strange. He teaches at Kim. All right. Oh, I've been in your, I was going to say, you look familiar. I've been in a few times. Yes. Uh, the accounting question. Good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. What other, any other questions? It's okay if you don't. <laughs> Excellent what, question. What are your least busy times? <laughs> January. <laughs> Everybody's on a diet. Like three weeks. Yes. Yeah, oh, during the week? Wednesday. Wednesday. I need to plan my trips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wednesday. Wednesday. It's the slowest day for us. Yeah. Fridays and Saturdays are the busiest. I, I've been four times. I've only been successful <coughs> once. I'm like, I've got to plan this. I know. Yeah. yeah. Because with little ones, I can't. I know. Mine. I just. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. So during the week, definitely is, is easier. Anything else? Thank you so Thank much. Thank you all so much.